Vive la revolution! Welcome back to the final driving segment of uh, uh, Valiant Hearts. Where, unlike the previous segments, a little... Oh, I already got hit. A little addition on top of the last driving segments, we're able to throw sticks of dynamite from our car. Oh dear. That's uh, quite the death mobile you got there. Ah, balls. He got me. That should have been the easy pattern for me to avoid, but he got me. Now these armored cars look pretty accurate. Uh, accurate, authentic, I don't know. I, uh, armored cars, I've seen designs like that. Um, the Chernobog here? That's, that's my nickname for this thing. A little less so. <laughs> but it's pretty neat, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Bleu. Oh no! The driver's trying to ram us! It's like the Shagahod chase. I love... This game doesn't really have much in the way of boss fights, but these kind of count like boss fights. and I love them for that. Oh, here we go. Bald Mountain. Oh, perfect. Oh dear. Bum 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 bum. Oh man, I love this tune. Oh wow! Woo is you? That was cutting it close. Try this on for size, big boy. And then we go back to the the flight of the bumblebee. That's fine too. Not as good as Bald Mountain, but sure. Oh, checkpoint! And we don't want checkpoints in this race. This is not an arcade racing game right now. Whoa! Oh man, there's no indicator on the ground where these ones are gonna hit. Just gotta play, play it by the nose. Ooh. Ow! Another hit, that's not good. Is the music off a little bit? Cause... It keeps playing the Chernobog music, Night on Bald Mountain, when the giant tank back backs away and when these little ones show up. Oh, there we go. No, never mind. Here we go. This is Mussorgsky at its best. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Whoa! Oh. Enjoy that. Why don't you? He's still not through. Oh, no. Oh, well, at least there's a checkpoint graciously right after the second hit, so... Just had to try and survive against his patterns. Whee! Oh, never mind. We cannot toss dynamite forward. Ow. Ooh! No, I don't, honestly, I, I, I take it back. This is totally a boss fight. It, and like, it totally fills all of the cards for a boss fight, all of the checkpoints. Like, I shouldn't say, this is the most honest boss fight in the whole game. And I love it. I love that this thing is in this game. Because the freaking tank is so cool. Or armored car, I guess. It does have wheels, so... I suppose it counts as an armored car rather than a tank, but, uh... That's three shots, you done? Oh my. Whew, that wasn't too hard. That was pretty hard. <laughs> well, nah, it's just because you only have three hits you can take. At last. Oh, and there we go, we get to the title screen at last. Finally, we're done with the prologue. Nah, nah. We're at the end of the game, I think. Uh, today we're wrapping this up, I'm pretty sure. But there isn't that much gameplay left. From what I recall. Although I said that at the start of the last two episodes, so... Hmm. 
intercepted by German troops who still held San Miel. Carl and Anna were led to the officers' quarters for interrogation. Hmm. Carl was sent back to fight for the Germans, while Anna was sent to the infirmary to care for soldiers. Well, that went surprisingly easy. French forces launched an assault on San Miel, an opportunity that Carl would not let slip by. I mean, it didn't go easy, but like, it didn't go perfect. But like, I thought the fact that I come in dressed as a <laughs> dressed as a French officer that would raise a lot more red flags than um. Oh. Than uh, than uh, you'd expect. Okay, let's see what do we got here. San Miel occupied. Huh, occupied, but as a salient. That means it's uh, not a pocket. It's like a little pointy bit in the front line, like a super far ahead from the rest of the front. But there's still like a corridor. It's not a pocket. A pocket is like that's completely cut off from the like main territory. Hmm. Damn it! That thing lasted for the whole war. Whew. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! Uh, okay. Oh, interesting. The gas was heavier than air, so... Well, yeah, okay. It wouldn't be very effective in its horrifying job if it didn't, you know, if it floated off into the sky. Uh, that's fair enough. Even today, unexploded gas shells still lurk beneath the farmland and fields along the former front. That's scary. I'm not gonna lie. That's the thought right there. Uh, no, not the historical fact. Let's see. No, no, not hints either. My god, that pigeon almost ruined everything for me. Let's see. Are there any new... There's a couple of new ones here. Miracles do happen sometimes. Carl is alive! That was quite a smart escape. Dressing the dead guy in his clothes actually worked. We have crossed the lines and we are so close to our goal. I hope they let me out of the infirmary. I'm going to try to find Marie's farm. Carl is being held at the barracks. They suspect he's a traitor. But they're still gearing me up for war and sending me back to the front, so... Uh. Oh, there's an earlier one here. I was going to give myself up this morning, but then I saw Anna, and she saved my life again. Now we're driving to San Miel. My poor feet will never forgive me. I don't know how we'll cross the front line, but I know these hills. We'll find a way. Cut to... I'm not a spy. How many times do I have to tell them to make them believe me? Having served under von Dorf isn't helping matters either. If only I could see Marie and Victor just for one minute. I have to know they are safe. But seeing them means getting out of here first. Alright. Well, I guess I have to play along with the Germans for now. What's up? Oh my god! That's the guy who owned Walt at the start of the game. He's still, against all odds, alive. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah, I've got this order to join the forces again. Oh boy. No one's confused by the fact that this French officer is walking in their midst. All right. Okay. This way. Okie dokie. Oh, I'm missing probably a bunch of treasures by just running like this, but... Oh well. Hi there! Okie dokie. And... Uh... Oh! I was like, is the helmet gonna change? But oh no, we still got the... We still got the French helmet. And what do we have here? Another name tag, an ID tag, 1916 model for Schaurz Klaus, by the looks of it. An identification tag with a detachable part used by the authorities in corpse administration. The main part was left on the body. This model was put in service late 1916. Oh, I see. You can see it's kind of snap it off in the middle there. There's like little slots there. So the gauss goes kind of snap, and the part is left left with uh, is left with the uh, corpse. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll get on that, boss. Good, good to see you too, I guess. 
do his thing. Ah, don't worry, Walt. Don't worry, your pretty little head. Um, I need to worry my pretty little head about getting back to getting back to uh, San Miguel now. It's getting a little sticky. Okay, let's not play with that any further. Well, we are petting a lot of Walt today, aren't we? You can see a super cool looking. Um, uh, not a sh that model's not a Stahlhelm. Those Prussian helm, I think, is what those are called with the spike on top. But uh, we'll have to figure out how to get there. Okay, thank you. Um, not sure what to. Oh, I guess I could punch that. Um, I don't actually know. Yeah, what do I do here with this guy? It's like a requisitions officer, but mm. ah, apples. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Ha, yeah, doctor. Have an apple. Oh, and I get the uh, Gazette des Ar Gazette des Ardans. Let's see. The Gazette des Ardans was a daily newspaper published in Belgium and distributed in the German occupied zone. The newspaper was a German propaganda tool written in French informing the local population of occupied zones and POWs of the German and Austro Hungarian empires feats of daring do. Oh, I read that. I kind of. My inflection was wrong there. Those, uh, populations. I was, I was informing the populations of occupied zones. And POWs, but that—that's wrong. It's—it's it's informing the population of occupied zones and POWs of this stuff. I—I—I I, I, I misread that sentence completely. Okay. Well, let's keep moving around and figure out. Well, I can't use the wheel on this thing. All right. I guess I won't. Can I give this guy an apple? Hello! Would you like an apple? No? Okay. Well, let's have a run around here as well. I actually... I I remember that we go straight to San Miguel after the car ride. I forgot about this whole segment where we're back here in... the, uh, the uh, German camp. For the first time, Carl in uniform. He was wearing that, like, POW uniform in the, um... Well, the first time we're playing as him, sorry, I meant. We saw him several times in uniform at the start of the game, but, um... First time we're playing as Carl in uniform here in the, uh... Here in this bit. Ah, I'm confused what I could do with this apple. And also, I'm confused what to do. I'm, I'm Seriously, I don't remember this part at all. But yeah, the last time we played as a uh, Carl, he had the um, he had the POW uniform, and then he had a series of elaborate disguises. Oh wait a second! Oh, I I got I now I got an idea. I was like actually blanking out for a second on what to do, but we, I mean, I was thinking of what can I toss this because this is obviously a tossable item. There's so many apples to pick. That's your cue. There's a tossable item. There's a pile which never runs out. So what if we? That didn't work because the guy just picked it up. So now he struts along very very slowly. So. Let's see what happens if I do that. There we go, and then Walt gets that key before he's aware of what's going on. Ah! Whoa, no, Walt, 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 Walt! This way! Wrong person! Thank you. I love it when the plan comes together. There we go, and that, that was the only key we had, so... The, the only lock we had, so... Really, the only key we could use it. What the... What is this? Oh, this is... Oh, oh, wait a second. Now, I said I forgot this part, but actually, now that I see this window here, now I remember what this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But first... Good. Looks good. Ready for a war again. But no. I remember. This is a flag. A German battle standard. If you will. So that's why we could not operate that flagpole previously. As there was nothing to operate there. But now we have this flag to attach. Got mit uns for a four corner hardcore lot. Her wall streets group got mit uns. Okie dokie. That's that's the wrong war. I know. Don't 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 write in and tell me. I'm aware of that. So let's go back and look at this window with these strange markings right here. So the one is pointing at the eight. The two is pointing at the I, which looks a lot like a number one. And the three is pointing at that S in uns, which looks a lot like a number five. So 815. We've cracked the code. I, I, I really like that one for some reason. I think that's really neat, that uh, little puzzle. So, eight. One. Five. I guess you could brute force that because, like, it ticks for a second. But we did it the proper way. A bayonet. Unlike the broader German bayonet, the French bayonet was needle-like and designed to pierce enemies and cause serious internal damage. French foot soldiers were disappointed with the bayonet's damage potential, so they added notches to create further damage as the bayonet was removed. Oh god, they turned it into like a sawtooth thing? Ugh, brutal. Sacre bleu, this is not doing enough damage. I think I need to turn this into a killing machine. What was that noise? By the way. Oh, right, of course. It's that same guy whose sto clothes we stole, I think, because he's got the scar on his face. Uh, and I, I think that may be the guy that... Uh, great. I'm always going to run into these on my first go, aren't I? I think that's the same guy that uh, trained Emil at the start of the game. Maybe? I, I, I'm not going to swear on that, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. But with a scar on his face, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be the guy who chased us in the Chernobog a minute ago. No! Shit! Oh, come here, Walt. Oh, I can't pet you, Walt. You have to come, Walt. We're like... We're like, we're like dead if we stay here. I, I, I'm sorry, but I feel bad too, but... Oh, and now we're here. Oh god. Now we're attacking the French. This is an interesting turn of events. Okay, well we're not going that way. There's a bit too gap, not much gas there. Wow, that shout, did you hear that? That sounded really scary. Oh, more. For the record, I do not subscribe to the classic meme about the French being terrible at, terrible at fighting and cowards. I think the French military is pretty damn scary. And right now I am peeing my pants at the thought of this French attack coming this way. Now, what am I supposed to do here? For a second I was afraid I punched Walt. That would have been terrible. Can you bite through that? Oh no, you can draw it. Okay, that's fine too. What? Curious. How do I get this gas mask? Wait, can I... Right, I can do this. Nope, that did not help at all. What if I do... Oh, now we got the swing of things. Oh, there's a treasure right here. Come on, reach it! Damn it, no. Okay, well, let's get this treasure at least. This uh, hip flask. A hip flask could be secreted nicely. Secreted? That's the wrong pronunciation, sorry. A hip flask could be secreted nicely into a trouser or jacket pocket and generally contained a wee dram of the strong stuff to give soldiers a hearty nip before strolling into danger. Or after pulling through a tight spot. 
Liquid courage, as they say. Oh no, I, I see now. I need to actually time my hits, so... Come on, baby. Reach it. Yeah. Whew. That's getting a little spooked there for a second. With how tricky that was. Oh, wow. Combat Walt. New from Mattel. Walt combat version. Oh, right. Because now we can have Walt go and get that mask for us. Brilliant. New from Tonka Toys, Carl and <laughs> Carl and Walt Chemical Warfare Action Unit. Awesome! Only nine ninety nine. Let's just hope this filter lasts. If Metro taught me anything, as I've said many times, it's that you need to be careful with your filters, or um, you're gonna have a bad time. While Carl was about to finally make it back home, Freddy was joining the Canadian troops stationed at Bimmy. Alrighty. We got these brave Can Canucks here. Can I guess right the term, right? A British aviator from the Royal Air Force was spotting the German positions for artillery. Hello, George. On this day, Canadian troops led the charge. I believe George is a character from a comic book that was released coincident with this game. I think he's supposed to be kind of like... He was like a hero in the comic book. I know there's a comic book. A web comic, if you will, because it was released online based on this game, which is like kind of like a prequel. Very well, General Hastings. Onwards. But um, I haven't actually read it myself, so... I just feel like I've seen the art for old George up there previously. Good work, George! Oh no! Run! Run! I know what I'm doing. Is there trivia? There is trivia here about Vimy Ridge. This is a peaceful moment to read, yes? Uh-huh. 100,000 Canadians. Magad. Oh, that's interesting. Can Canada has permanent use of the hill? Cool. That's very cool. And that's a symbol for Canada. That's interesting. Well, that's a uh, Canadian pride for that, eh? And before we get shot down, let's also read our diaries. Nothing new here. All right, cool. Now let's on with your regularly scheduled wholesale slaughter. Okay. Now the freaking German planes are on us as well. What? So a prompt, I think. What was that noise? Someone's making. Desperate noises. Huh? Fire the cannons? Yeah, okay. Ooh, what's in this box? Nothing. What? Why is this box here? Okay, I, I don't know why this box is here. Interesting, look at that. They're carrying, like, machi portable machine guns. Light machine guns, if you will. Okay, I guess we cannot go this way until we deal with this shell situation. There we go. Yeah, 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 I see this design. That's a, that's a light machine gun, which I... Yeah, I guess if this is close to the 1917, closer to the end of the war, I guess they could have had stuff like this. What is the purpose of this bunker? There's no treasures to be found. Oh, never mind. Yes, there was. This, uh, this Brody helmet. The Brody helmet was also known as the Tommy or Shrapnel helmet and was worn by all British Empire forces, whether British, Canadian or Australian troops. Even the American army used it when they first joined the war. Its distinctive form brought it a whole host of other nicknames. Dishpan hat, tin pan hat, wash basin and battle bowler. The Germans called it the Salatschussel or Salad Bowl. That's fun. That's a fun, fun, that's a fun hat. Cool design. Okay, we need to do some artillery spotting here, so let's go, baby. Um. Alright. That's at about 10 degrees, I'd say, is that cannon. And 65 for that one. 10 and 65. That will... For some reason, those angles correlate to this one really well. 
Uh, okay, okay, hold on. 85, 75, 70, 65. Let's go, baby. Eat this! Whoa, now that was a wacky angle. I'm sure that's how cannons work. <sighs> okay. 10. I can do maths. Don't worry, guys. KO! Ways open, lads! Charge! Oh, God. They've still got an operational cannon. Who'd have thunk it? Oh, I need to break that. <laughs> Ooh. All right, good. We got our... Yeah, look at that. Our troops are dealing with them in the background. That's super cool. Whoa, keep running. So keep running like super hard. Whoa, incoming. Wow. That was a nice landing there. Fritz. Okay, big gun. What do you want me to do with the big gun? Let's see. I forgot about this entire segment as well. I I guess I don't remember this game nearly as well as I did, because... Um, well, I remembered the whole armored car chase and at the start of the episode. Definitely, because that was a huge, crazy boss fight, but... I remember us going straight to San Miguel from there. And there's been some segments that I completely forgot, like the mining segment that we did with Emil previously. It was like, what? That was a thing? Cool, I think that helped, maybe. Achtung, achtung! Oh, some Canadian coins? Yes, Canadians already used cents and dollar pre-independence. In 1914, they were minted with the image of King George V. Canadians in France earned $1.1 per day, corresponding to the average daily wage of an office or factory worker. Oh, I was about to think, trying to think what would be a Canadian way of saying nice, but I actually don't know. Oh, that's real good, Derry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't you know? That's real good, eh? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, my Canadian's a little Let's off, go, isn't it? <laughs> that was cool. Let's go, boys. Northeast. Northeast? All right. Like this. Southwest. This position. Wow, that was easy. Thanks, George. I don't know how how close he was buzzing us for Freddy to hear George, but sure. <laughs> sure, I'll take that. This again. All right, here we go. Yes, sir, Mr. Hastings, sir. Wait, wait. I want to get in. Dang it. Why did it get inside the tank? Well, I mean... I feel fairly safe behind this armored monstrosity, so... Unless the thing blows up. Manfred von Richthofen, he's back from the dead again! Oh, oh, oh no, oh no! Well, that... Never mind what I just said five seconds ago. <laughs> that didn't feel so safe after all. Ooh, that was close. Move, move, move! Manfred! He's down! We beat the Red Baron! Oh, no, wait, there he is again. What's it take to beat that guy? Don't worry, this shipment of Canadian wheat will stop them. Oh no! There's too much hydrocarbons in there! Someone stop that cart! Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> that was a little... Cutting a little close, don't you think? No treasures here either? That looks like a treasure spot. Well... Maybe here? I'm sure my lads over there can handle them. Moments fight. Okay, fine. Here we go. That didn't... There we go. Took a couple of shots. Oh! In the bunker. What's our next plan, boys? Oh, there's a map of their German systems. What is this? A crest model. Relief models of hills were made so that soldiers could visualize their objectives. 
Oh, this is, reminds me of a Blackadder gag, where they're like, this is one-to-one, -one, this this uh, model of captured land, sir. Where they bring the little plot of land. Look at the, look at the details, you can see a little earthworm there, sir. Watch Blackadder, guys, it's really good. Except for the really last episode, that one is super sad. Maybe watch that if you're feeling in the mood for being really sad. <laughs> Yeah, Canada! Oh, Canada! Some sacrifices. The Canadians finally managed to take the hill back from the Germans. The United States' entry into the war grew more certain by the week. Come on, Woodrow. Get with the program. The last letter from Freddy's younger brother confirmed his country's newfound eagerness to join the fight. That's get good. Well, it is good for the French and the British, the Allies. 